Here is an easy way to achieve incredible results for beauty images. And today, we are going to be retouching this image using the Tamara Williams Academy. And I also believe in a link where you can get the plugin I used to retouch this image in short below as well. And if you use the discount code TIN10, you are going to get 10% off your purchase. Alright? So after you finish getting that plugin, just come to your plugin right here. After you've installed it, just come to Williams Academy and click on Williams Academy right here. And this is the interface of the Williams Academy. Now, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to duplicate my layer by pressing on Ctrl J. So after duplicating my layer, I'm just going to remove the blemishes for this image. Now, to remove the blemishes on the forehead, I'm just going to come to this texture bar right here and just click on the Remove tool. Once I click on the Remove tool, it's just going to open a new texture adjustment layer for me. And I'm just going to paint on the blemishes like this to just remove it just like that. And once I'm done, I'm going to click on Good right here. I'm just going to remove the blemishes for me. And that's what I can do. I can just pick my healing brush tool and just paint on any blemishes I want to remove. And it's just going to remove the blemishes for me. Just like that. All right. Or I can actually use the close thumb tool right here. But the way I remove my blemishes, I'm just going to come to this focus separation right here. and use focus separation to actually remove the blemishes from my image. So I come to focus separation and click on focus separation via aggression blur right here. I'm just going to load that for me. Now we have our low frequency which consists of the colors and our high frequency which consists of the texture right here. So I'm going to click on this high frequency texture cover which is this first one right here and pick my close thumb tool and just press alternate to sample from the close by area and just remove the blemishes. So if you want to remove your blemishes through focus separation, make sure you are working on this high frequency texture copy right here which is this first layer and just sample from your close by area and just paint over the blemishes you want to remove just like that. Remember to press Alt to sample or Option if you're using a Mac to sample and just brush over any blemishes you want to remove. And if you are doing this, make sure you're actually taking your time to remove the blemishes from your image. Okay? So I'm going to be doing this for the whole of the image. So I finished removing the blemishes. So this is the before and the after. All right. So next thing you can do, you can actually use corrective tool right here to actually mix the colors of your image. All you have to do is to click on this first layer right here and just hide this high frequency texture and just going to remain only the color. Now you can now you can either pick your mixer brush tool. Let's say for example, I want to mix this forehead color right here. I'm just going to pick my mixer brush and just mix the color right here on the forehead just to make it smooth like that. All right. Just like this. Let me do the same thing for here. And just use my mixer brush tool to mix the color. Remember, I'm brushing on this corrective tone. So I'm just going to brush on it just like this. All right. Now, let me show you the before and after of what we just did. So you can see. Let me just zoom in. So this is the before and the after. The before and the after. And if you feel it's too much, you can just come to the corrective tone and just reduce the opacity. So I can do this for the whole of this image and just going to make the image smooth. But I really don't like using focus separation to retouch beauty images like this. So I'm not going to click on my eraser tool and just erase everything I did. And I'm just going to use dodge and burn to retouch this image. All right. So that's for the focus separation. Now I'm just going to come to dodge and burn layer right here. And right here I'm going to first of all click on global dodge and burn. Once I click on global dodge and burn, it's just going to load for me. Now to see where to dodge and burn, I'll come back to this plugin and just click on this helping layer right here. And just going to load some adjustment layer for me. Now you can see we have the dodge and burn help. So if I click on it, it's just going to help me see where to dodge and where to burn. Now we have the dodge and burn help black and white. Now this is even much better, but I feel it's looking too dark. So I'm just going to click on this curve adjustment layer right here. And just move the curve up a little bit so I can see where to dodge and where to burn even more. So I'm going to close this adjustment layer like this. Now we have strong brightness right here. That is if you want to make the dark parts more bright or we have mid brightness right here. If you want to make the intensity more or less. All right. Now for the strong darkness, it also increases the intensity of the darkening and the mid darkening means the intensity of the darkening is going to be less. Now for the global dodge and burn, I'm simply going to be using the brightening to brighten those parts of the image that are looking a bit dark and using the darkening to darken those bright part of the image that is looking too bright just to even out the way light falls on the image. Now you can see this part right here that are looking too dark. I'm just going to come to my strong brightness right here. Just pick my normal brush tool and take my opacity to 100% while I'll take my flow to about 3%. I'm going to click on OK. Now 
I'm just going to paint on this part right here that I'm looking too bright. Alright, now I feel this strong brightness is too much. I'm just going to undo that. Okay, and maybe take my flow to about 2%. Alright, and just come to this mid brightness and just paint white on that place right there. Just to make it a little bit brighter. Now you can see this place right here on the nose is looking a bit too bright. I'll come back to the mid darkening and just brush on this place right here. Make sure you are brushing with a white brush and not black. If it's on black, just click here to change to white. Or if it's another color, just click on this little black and white icon right here to change it to default black and white. So once it's on white, just paint, okay? Now use a darken to paint on the bright part and use a brightening to paint on the dark part just to even it out like that. All right, so I'll come back to my mid brightening and just brighten this part a little bit more, just like this. All right, do the same thing for here, do the same thing for here. Now I'll come to the forehead, just going to brighten this part a little bit. I feel that looking a bit too dark. All right, now the part that looking too bright, I'll come back to my mid darken and just darken it a little bit. Now let me show you what I've done so far so you can actually have an idea of what I'm trying to accomplish with this. Alright, so let's see the before and after so you can see. Now, this is the before and the after. The before and the after. Now let me just turn off this hair player so you can actually see the colored version. Okay, now just take a look at the image, the before and the after. You can see this place right here that are looking a bit too dark. They are not bright and even, the before and the after. Also take a look at the forehead. The before and the after so basically that's what i'm going to be doing for the whole of this image i'm just going to be using this brightening to brighten the dark part and use this darken to darken the bright part just like that to make everything blend i'm going to turn on my hair player again and just continue doing that for the whole of the image all right all right let's see the before and after of our global jambon so this is the before and the after the before and the after now if you feel it's too much you can just come to the opacity I just reduce the opacity a little bit okay just a little bit like so until you feel it's okay so that this works for me the before and the after now i'm going to go even more intense with this macro dodge and burn right here just to smoothen out the pores and just make everything blend all right now to do that i'm just going to click on this macro dodge and burn right here once i click on it you're just going to load this macro dodge and burn for me now inside this macro dodge and burn, we have the fizz brightness. So if I just paint right now, you're going to see the effect of that. Let me just take the opacity to 100% so you can see the effect of that. Let me just paint right now so you can see. Alright, you can see if I paint with this fizz brightness, it's just going to make the bright part of the image dark. While this pause right here, if I paint on it, it's just going to make those pores a little bit brighter like that. Alright, so this pause is to brighten. While this fizz brightness right here is to darken. Okay, let me just undo that. Now what I'm going to do, I'll take my opacity to about 50% and take the flow to about 1% and click on OK. Now I'm just going to turn on my dodge and bone hair player again. Now this time since this is micro dodge and bone, I'm just going to zoom in inside like this. For this place that are looking too dark, I'll come to the pores right here and just paint on them just to brighten them up a little bit just like that. Alright, and make sure you're using a white brush. I think I'll take my opacity to 100% and just build it up with the flow. So I'm just going to paint on those dark places right there just to make them a little bit brighter, just to build it up and make everything blend. Now this part I'm looking too bright. I'm just going to click on this face brightness and just paint on them just to make them a little bit darker like that, just to make everything blend. All right, so I'm going to come back to pause and just click on it. Now, if you are doing this, make sure you are actually taking your time to do this. It's very, very, very important. Make sure you are taking your time to do this step. And it takes a lot of time, so just be patient when actually doing this step. All right? So, I'm just going to continue doing this for the image. Let me just turn off this layer so you can see what we've done so far. Take a look at this place right here. The before and the after. And I feel it's looking too bright. What I can do, I'll just come to the opacity and just reduce the opacity until I feel it's matching. I'm not going to reduce the opacity now. I'm just going to continue doing it. And once I'm done, I'm just going to reduce the opacity. All right. I'll turn on these layers again. Now what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take the opacity to 50% and just continue doing this for the whole of this image. All right. So these are before Makodo Jambon and after Makodo Jambon. But I'm still seeing some brightness right here, which I need to fix. 
So I'm going to click on Global Dodge and Burn again. Once I click on Global Dodge and Burn, I'm going to come all the way down. I click on Strong Darken right here. And just darken this particular place right here. So pick my normal brush tool. Change my opacity to 100%. And take the flow to about 2%. And just paint on these bright parts of the image that I'm just saying. They look a little bit too bright. So I'm just going to darken them a little bit. Make sure you're using a white brush. So I'm just going to darken them a little bit just like that. Because I feel they're looking a bit too bright. Okay. Do the same thing for this part right here. And I think we're good to go. Let's see. So I think I'm just going to brighten it up a little bit. So I'll come to this mid brightening. And just brighten this part right here. A little bit 